Hello, and welcome to the University of Brighton. My name is Matt Ingram. I am the course leader for the MRes in Pharmaceutical and Biomedical Sciences. Now, the MRes programme is a research degree that sits alongside the MPhil and the PhD programmes. As part of that, the MRes programme is incorporated in the university's research training framework. I'm here today with Jem Stapleton, who is the course leader for that framework. Now, Jem, could you just tell us what the essence of a research degree is? Yes, uh, the essence of a research degree um, is about a cent well, providing a qualified researcher and people would obtain that qualification by working typically within a specific discipline. Um, but within that, we actually require people to have a range of skills um, that would say they know how to do research generally. OK, as part of that, as part of the MRES programme in particular, there is a core module that is the overview of research methodologies. Now, the one thing I'm very impressed with that module is we get students from all sorts of discipline working together and interacting together. So from mathematics, your own discipline, from the science discipline, from the arts and humanities. Could you really tell me what the essence is of that overview of research methodology module is? Yes, with that module, we're aiming to provide uh, students with a very broad range of generic skills. And because that's one of the advantages of working with lots of different students from different disciplines, because you can draw on a range of different perspectives that can inform your own research. Um, we try and cover a, a range of um, ideas. So we start off by thinking about what do we mean by knowledge. Um, and from that, we would then start to think about how we might conduct a literature review in order to to understand what is known already and to be able to identify gaps in knowledge that will um, allow us to identify significant and interesting problems um, that we may want to undertake in our own research. Uh, once we've identified open questions and gaps in the knowledge, we would then be in a position where we can start to phrase and identify exactly which questions we do want to answer. And moving on from that, we would need to be able to work out how to plan a research project um, so part of this module is about providing you with the skills in order to begin such a plan. Um, once we've, we've done that, there's the, a notion we'd have to disseminate our work to other people. So we would also think about how we might uh, write that up and identify places to publish. Um, we would also think about ethical issues that arise within research. Uh, those ethical issues can, in some areas, be... Um, very involved and complex, whereas in others there, there may be very few ethical considerations at all. Um, but regardless of that, I think every researcher needs to be aware of what kinds of ethical issues could arise, because that may only be to be able to justify that they haven't got any, or very few, within their own subject area, um, on, on particularly on their own project. Um, so the, the course would cover ethical considerations as well. Um, we would also look at what do we mean by intellectual property and what people's rights are and how you would go about protecting your own intellectual property. And I think that probably just about covers the content of the module. OK, thank you for that. So along with that, the students, when they get their research question, they will have to come up with a research plan. And as part of your role is to look at those research plans. Um, so what is the reason why we make students make plans when they're doing their research? Um, I think for me there are two key reasons. Um, the first is we want to make sure um, be a, that we can support students in their projects and that the, the plan they have produced will get them to their qualification within the appropriate time. And the second key reason, as I think as a, a researcher, it's a very important skill to be able to produce a research plan because certainly if you go on to an academic career you'll be in a position where you have to justify to others that you have a plan that is going to answer a, a substantial research question. So although it's part of a process that our students go through for, in order to get their degree, there's actually a much bigger reason for getting people to produce these plans. Essentially, we're not about writing one proposal, we're about having students that have the skills to write many proposals for the future so they can sustain their research careers in the future. That's absolutely right. And, and while it serves a, a purpose of ensuring that people are going to get their qualification, it's about providing these generic skills that people are going to need in the future as well. OK. Now, slightly tricky question for you. We, in the UK, we've got lots of different degrees. And we can essentially div divide postgraduate degrees into 
taught degrees and research degrees. In your opinion, what is the difference between the two? Um, in my opinion, um, with a research degree, there would be much more emphasis on the independence of the student, um, the student driving forward the direction they're going in, particularly with research projects, it would be their own interests that would determine that, along with the supervisory experience we have available. Uh, with a taught degree, there's much more emphasis on uh, us in telling students about what they need to learn about and, and directing that in a much more hands-on manner. Um, so with a research degree, we would be looking to make sure people have the right skill set that they can actually conduct these, uh, their studies in an independent way. Okay. So all the research degrees we do here, students have to produce a thesis. Okay. So with that, we're getting students to put all their either experimental work or their data collection in a format that's then communicated. And at the moment, we're doing it in a written form, it's in a thesis. At the end of the thesis, the students have to undergo a viva. So from your point of view, what is the important aspects of doing that viva? Um, I think it's about convincing your examiners that you have a, a very solid understanding of related work would be the first thing, but primarily that you have a very solid understanding of your own research project and that you can justify its significance um, to your examiners. Um, there is also be an aspect that they'd want to be sure that it's your own work. Um, that's probably about all. Okay. Okay, Jen, well, thank you for that. That's really good just to give us an overview of life as a research student at the University of Brighton. If you do have any other questions or you're interested in our research degrees or our taught degrees, then we would be happy to hear from you. Thank you for your time.